So now what I'd like to do so that I can try to install more games is enable 64-bit emulation. Because for some of these games you'll notice in Steam that the install is grayed out. Some, some are not, some are. And what I'm guessing this means is that it can't install this game on a 64-bit, uh, uh, it, it can't install a 64-bit game on a 32-bit machine and that's what it sees under emulation. So the first thing that we'll have to do is type in Insider at the start menu. Go to beta channel, which we're already in, and we're getting beta channel stuff, but what we want to do is get dev channel. Which is quite risky, but it'll have the 64-bit uh, emulation installed, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, let's download and install this. And I will see you on the other side of this installation because it's going to be a bit. So I downloaded <clears throat> Mortal Kombat 10 from the Steam store after upgrading um, Windows to the version that will emulate 64-bit games or 64-bit programs. I then installed the C++ runtime and the DirectX user runtime. And I can show you how I did that. C++ runtime so uh, I just googled for C++ runtime went to this link the latest supported C++ visual downloads and then downloaded the x64 version of the C++ runtime. I then went to a Google for DirectX runtime download and it's the first hit at least in Bing. DirectX end user runtime web installer went there. <clears throat> Downloaded that. So that was relatively quick and it, it got me up to date, or rather it got this virtual machine up to date so that it could run games. I had already installed Steam, then I downloaded Mortal Kombat X. Now Mortal Kombat has this routine that it goes through where it will optimize itself or change its resolution and detail and model detail until it'll run properly on your machine so it had to go through a couple minutes of optimizing for this machine but it's perfectly playable it stutters in some places but not terribly so it's a completely playable game on windows x um, or, or rather Windows on ARM running under x64 emulation and it's actually pretty incredible there's several layers of emulation going on here first 
the Windows environment is running on a virtual machine. Second, within the virtualized Windows environment, you have x64 emulation. So through all of that, the Mac M1 is able to push the uh, Mortal Kombat X program fast enough so that it's playable. So I'm actually able to get decent frame rates out of this. So it's not as fast as I would like or as smooth as it would be on a, a gaming machine. But bear in mind all the emulation that's going on, you have virtual Windows and you have virtual X64 running on a Mac M1. So it's actually pretty impressive that it's able to do this. Right now we're just looking at a cutscene, but let's see if I can skip this so we can get right into the fighting. I'm going to get pretty much destroyed by this guy. But as you can see, the action is pretty good. frame rates although unfortunately right now there's no sound on uh, the windows the windows on arm machine but still I'm, I'm pretty impressed that it's able to do this this is not this is not a online game this is running actually on the M1 Mac and as you can see the frame rate it might not be consistently 60 but it's uh, it's getting there it's getting close and I'm getting completely defeated here but the point is to show you that in real time the Mac M1 is able to play games under in a virtual machine And this game is only a couple years old, and this is a low-end Mac. This will be. This is the worst. This is the worst M processor we'll ever see, but it's able to do this. Most impressive. Okay. So now let's take a look at some Geekbench benchmarks for Windows on ARM running under uh, Mac OS on the M1 chip. That's quite a mouthful. So I freshly installed Geekbench. This is actually running natively under uh, X64 arm so Geekbench will actually be benchmarking the Windows on ARM performance pro profile and not Windows on ARM emulating X64 okay so I actually ran this before and it looks like it got a slightly better score this time so I ran it before and I got 1344 for single core and 4137 for multi core. This time when I run it, I get 1456 and 4697. Now that compares to a Apple Silicon uh, MacBook Air that I had, but I returned it to get the MacBook Pro. Uh, it got 
1703 and the multi-core was 7460. Now to put all that into perspective, I have a nearly $3,000 MacBook Pro with eight cores and a discrete graphics card and it only scores 1099 for single core and 6605 for multi-core. So given that this is emulated I think this might be pretty impressive. This is actually running under uh, an emulated operating system, a, a beta emulated operating system under a beta machine emulator on ARM. And I'm pretty sure, I, I don't know it for a fact, but I'm pretty sure that this score is higher than what the Surface Pro X gets all on its own, just running Geekbench by itself. Let's see if I can actually find some. Surface Pro X. Let's see. Surface Pro X. Okay. So here we have Surface Pro X running. Um, this is the X, the the SQ2, which is the second generation chip. Um, it's scoring 776 on a single core and 3,005 on a multi-core. Just to put this in perspective, the emulated version of Windows, or should I say the emulated, the version of Windows running under an emulator is scoring twice this or almost twice this on a on a MacBook Pro on ARM and it's actually scoring higher significantly higher on multi-core on a MacBook Pro so right now it seems like the best machine to run Windows ARM is a MacBook Pro